Welcome back and a happy birthday, a special one belated, I must say, to you, Mrs. Agatha Safo, uh, wife of my good brother Bernard Safo. It was your birthday yesterday. Happy birthday to you. And uh, if it's yours as well today, happy birthday. We do love you. But last week, last Friday, the 17th of May, Community Connect was out there at the LECMA. We went to discuss a couple of issues and a mop up of some of the issues we had discussed with them a few months earlier. There's evidence that most of the assemblies and, in fact, the persons with disability are not pretty much aware of the guidelines of the 3% allocation for the common fund for persons with disability. So this morning, we've been joined by Abdul Wahab. He is the uh, Media and Communications Manager for the Ghana Federation of Persons with Disability. Abdul, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. How are you doing, my brother? I'm good. Good to you? see you. I'm good. So <laughs> last Friday, uh, it became evident that most of the persons with disability are not even aware of your guidelines which you have stated which would let them benefit from the three percent allocation why is that so <clears throat> yeah thank you very much to your viewers and listeners as well uh what i must say is that um yes when we had the guidelines put in place mm. in uh, 2010 we have had a lot of community engagement on the guidelines, but unfortunately, we had not been able to cover the whole uh, country. Why? What I think, um, you know, what we did was we visit districts where we have uh, activities or programs okay. running. Mm. But one thing I think we should have also done there was just like a we are sitting here today discussing mm. Mm. Uh, this issue. The guidelines could have been educated. Uh, people could have been educated on the guidelines mm. through the media and then uh, whatever. So honestly, yes, the guidelines do exist. But uh, I must say that it's not all districts that are very aware of the of the. Of what the what is keeping you from making everybody aware? Uh, people who must benefit from it. And I mean, at, at Letma, for example, we had a lot of people come. Uh, they were asking for things, um, begging for it, when in fact they have a right by law and by your guidelines to demand for those things and get them. Yeah, you see, one thing that is also making it difficult for the guidelines to reach all persons with disabilities is that the common fund is for all persons with disabilities, right. whether one belongs to an association or organization or not. So, of course, I believe that those who actually belong to organizations and are part mm. of organizations are aware okay. of the guidelines. Mm. But those who do not belong to any organization mm. might not be aware of the guidelines. Mm. And these are the people who might complain that they do not know anything about the guidelines. Mm. Yes, I do agree that we have not been able to do very extensive engagement. And mm. I do also believe that uh, uh, people who belong to organizations of persons with disabilities are certainly aware of those guidelines. The, the call is for everybody to be involved. Yeah. Inclusivity is key. How do we rope in uh, these people who don't belong to associations? What's your plan? Yeah, um, the plan we have is that usually when we have um, engagement with uh, persons with disabilities who belong to mm. organizations, we do invite people who do not belong to any organizations mm. and let them understand uh, issues around disabilities mm. as well as their rights and then uh, their rights in society. Mm. So the plan is involving them whether they belong to organization or not. How soon is this plan workable? It's an ongoing process. Even yesterday. Give me timelines, Abdul. Uh, you know, uh, this, is, this, is, this is an advocacy issue. And uh, usually, we do not have, uh, let's see, either, either we have, uh, that is the short term, medium term or long term. Do you term. have a plan, Abdul? Yes. Does your federation have a plan to bring everybody on board on the same you know, page so that when they go uh, to the assemblies and something is going wrong, they know this is not there, this is it. This is what my guideline says. Do you have a plan? Yeah, yes, we do have a plan. And the plan is even enshrined in the new, in the, in the revised 
what do you call it, guidelines. Mm -hmm. We are we have realized that uh, there are some lapses in the current guidelines. Mm -hmm. Now we have uh, had a lot of engagement around the guidelines, and then uh, it is on it, or it is at its final point where we have to engage the minister for um, rural government, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, or this Gender, minister for lo local government mm -hmm. and rural development to uh, append her signature on it mm -hmm. for rush to begin using it and per that guidelines mm -hmm. um we need to do sensitization right. everybody including the assemblies persons with disabilities mm -hmm. as well as the fan management committees and at this time the this uh, the national council on persons with disability mm -hmm. will champion that Cost. These things you're talking about is yeah. in your present guidelines yeah. uh, passed in 2010 or adopted in 2010. Yeah. And so reprinting them won't change the situation on the ground, Abdul. It is not about reprinting. It is about because your, your current guideline says you have to sensitize the people about their rights as persons with disability. You're telling me that it's been refreshed and you're going to bring this out. You're waiting for a signature. But what will change on the ground? That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, but uh, we might also agree and understand that, of course, the sensitization is ongoing. As I said earlier, it's only probably those who do not belong to any organization of persons with disabilities who mm. might not be aware of the guidelines. So it is about we reaching out to all persons with mm. disabilities. And I'm asking you, when do you, plan, that, do, do you have a, a timeline, a calendar to say in January, between January and June, we're going to do Southern Sector, we're going to travel to A, B, C, D. Uh, between July and December, we're going here. Do you have a calendar like that? Do you, honestly? Yeah, honestly, we do have a calendar. But the difficulties in putting out this issue here is about... Um, People who do not belong to any organization. You keep it go, is very you keep yes. Back I want to, to be. I want you to be sure that the the guidelines that you have now talks about both individuals and groups benefiting yes, from it. But then so, let, me, let me let me just come out. So here. why 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 are you pushing people into? Let me groups? just come. Let me just come here. For example, if I am going to the streets mm. to meet those who are begging, and tell them that okay, there is a. Uh, common fund for persons with disabilities and these mm. are the guidelines don't you think it will be very difficult to just go to the streets and ha then have you begin tried talking to have you people? tried it and it didn't work have you tried speaking to the people on the streets and it didn't i work? tried yes and it didn't work it didn't work some people even think that once you are talking about the common fund it is like uh, something i'll just go to the assembly and ask and they will give it to me to go and buy your, your, your present whatever. guidelines it's doesn't you know. have sanctions for people who uh, flout your guidelines it doesn't have any sanction at all does the new one have any sanctions punitive action that must be taken against people who misapply funds who don't retire their accounts who don't present their reports as it says in there yes the new the new ones uh, the revised one let me say the revised mm. one has those ones, it has because, those uh, ones. yeah so that uh, because we realized that earlier assemblies and even persons with disabilities themselves who have received the funds sometimes they misappropriate it or misapply mm. it and then when there are no sanctions people will continue to still live on that same behavior mm. so the, the new guidelines or the revised ones has made a provision for that. The, the splinter groups, one of the issues we realized at um, LECMA was that there were a lot of groups, you know, somebody comes up, forms a group, somebody comes up, forms a group. So within a small place, you have like pockets of groups there. And they say that is not helpful. They agreed it is not helpful to their cause. As the federation, uh, how are you trying to harmonize things so we don't have pockets of groups everywhere? Okay, issues relating to the common fund is not about groups. But then when you see a group of people or somebody forming a group, and then using the group to extort monies from the, the common fund, I want to see that uh, it, is, it is wrong. But then once that the report has come out, the Federation will also uh, do some research work there or some investigations there to ascertain some of these facts, then we 
engage with the assembly mm -hmm. persons with disabilities and those forming the group mm -hmm. and then make sure that we are all mm -hmm. at one page. It, it comes back to the point we're raising earlier yeah. that you say it's easier to educate the people using the groups and then on the other side you are saying that the groups may have their disadvantage. Where do we draw the fine line, Abdul? You see, when we are talking about groups and we are talking about associations or organizations, mm. we need to look at the differences over there. Mm. For example, we have Ghana uh, Association of Persons with Albinism, mm. which is an organization of persons with albinism. All right. Then we have, uh, let's say we have organizations that are legally recognized in the country. Right. That is different from me just forming up, uh, getting up today and see mm. that I have a group called Concern Albinus. Whether it is registered, it is recognized mm. or not, I want to say that maybe my affiliation with somebody somewhere, I have the right to extort money from the fans. We are looking at these differences. Okay. So that's, that's, that's your approach now. Yeah. Abdul, thank you very much indeed. And we hope that the new guideline, when is it up, the new guideline? Um, let me give you up to July. July. Uh, it should be out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. This conversation has been made possible by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, the European Union and UK Aid. My guest has been Abdul Wahab. He is the spokesperson or the media and communications manager for the Ghana Federation of Persons with Disability. We'll return with more here. We'll be talking about the VGMA some more and asking the critical questions. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>